screen television is now on Star Times Channel 173. Now our tentacles are extended to give you the very best of sports, news, entertainment shows, current affairs, blockbuster movies, and lots more. Tune in to Star Times Channel 173 and enjoy the very best of super screen television. Now you're talking. You're welcome back to Super Done, and then um, today on the show we're going to be looking at Roadmap 2019 with a focus on human capital development. And a quick one here, rapid socio-economic development has been observed to depend essentially on the caliber of human capital in a nation. Although Nigeria is one of the most populous nations in Africa, the country is still largely underdeveloped. These can be attributed largely to the underplanned efforts towards the development of human capital through education and training. Consequently, the country has been scored low by the United Nations in terms of its human development indicators such as life expectancy, literacy and economic growth rates. The population growth has continued to expand even beyond the rate of economy, a situation that gives rise to increasing poverty. Furthermore, Gender gap in access to education continue to persist in the urban and rural areas. While dropout rates continue to worsen, recommendations made to redress the situation include that human capital development should be planned and adequately funded in line with the needs of the economy and by applying international standards. Information about the labor market should improve while government policy should favor labor mobility. There should be regular interaction of planners, employers and builders of human capital to facilitate the process of meaningful national development. A new report by the United Nations Development Program UDPH, UNDP has shown Nigerian Human Development Index rising by two points and life expectancy also increasing by eight years. And now, the National Achievement in Human Development Indices in Health, Education and Income Standard of Living um, is about the 187 countries, with Nigerian rising population put at 190 million, appears to be a drag in the index computation. The HDI report shows that Nigerian HDI value for 2017 was 0 0.532. It was also 0 0.53 in, the, in 2016 and showed a consistent increase since the measurement began in 2003. From that base year, when the HDI was estimated to at 0 0.443, it has now increased to 0 0.532 in 2017, making a 14.4% over the period. Now, with these statistics given, it shows that Nigeria is still growing, but then again, it's not yet there when it comes to human capital development. And the question we are asking ourselves is, with all that we have as a nation, why are we still at this level? And let me, let's just quickly look at this now. Human capital development in Nigeria. What would you say is the reason why we're still at this level as a nation? Well, you know, it's very essential for the people to understand what we're talking about, human capital development. And uh, going by the fact that Blessed has actually laid down, we'll understand that the essence of uh, the current economic situation that Nigeria has actually found themselves in is as a result of several things, perhaps coming from the parts of government. You know, talking about some lapses, key lapses that has not been put in place by the government and we are looking at the issue of human capital development how valuable does the government take the people the, the the people of this country now do you think the government pays more attention to the people do you think the people are empowered enough as you know for them to be able to play the roles in terms of creating job in terms of education do you think the government has done reasonably well in providing those key amenities for the people in the community? That's the question that we are asking. And as a matter of fact, we want to inform you that our phone lines are open and you can call us in to get your contribution aired if you are impressed with what the government is doing so far in terms of human capital development. Now, blessed, I think for a start, for a start, it is really important for us to know that this whole thing 
doesn't have to do with the government in general. Now, Absolutely. yes, you can say it is the role of the government to provide an enabling environment for the government to make sure that some infrastructure are in place, the basic infrastructure like the road, you know, having enough opportunities for the people. But then, the people investing in humans themselves, do you still think that they believe in investing in humans? I remember uh, one time I, my father was actually telling me that there, there were times when the government would sponsor people out abroad to get educated and come back and transmit the knowledge that they have gotten from the developed nations back to the young ones. Do, do we still have such things happening in Nigeria? Now that's the question that we're asking this morning. If you think that the government is doing enough in terms of human capital development, but what you have to do is take your mind as far back since the military handed over to the democratic regime back in 1999. How far has Nigeria gone? That's what we're looking at. Now, if you think you as a person, looking at the government policies that has been put in place, are you impressed with the different government policies? Okay, like now, we're talking about Empower. Do you think Empower is enough? Trade and Money Initiative, where the government, the federal government goes about giving people money to start up businesses. Do you think they are empowering the people enough to do, um, you know, to start businesses for themselves. So that's what we're looking at this morning. Okay, talking about um, human capital development, the every nation must, every leaders of every nation must understand that um, the people are the greatest assets that they have, okay, because it takes the people to make up a nation. A nation is just a name, but it involves um, the people to make up a nation. And then for them to achieve human capital development, um, they need to be looking at investing on the people. Mm. We should be looking beyond just having a certificate, but rather having the right skills. The right skills that can make us more productive in our place of work. The right skills that make us more productive in every place or position that we find ourselves. The right skills that make us more pro pro um, productive in our, our, our place of our businesses and, and, and all that. So these are the key issues that governments, I believe government needs to be looking into. Just like you said, gone mm -hmm. are the days whereby um, government needs to um, set, put out some certain monies and then sponsor um, students through school. But we find out that those um, um, great deeds of, of, uh, of our leaders in the past are, are already eroded and we are not seeing that happening again in this time and age. And the question is, uh, why is it that um, one will, the, the um, legacies that our, lead, our past leaders have put in place, we will find out that some of those legacies are no longer in place today in place. again. And that will, one way or the other, it has really eaten deep into our, our country. And, and then again, our people are not really benefiting much as they ought to from, from the government. Yes, the government, you know, everything still boils down to the government as the first point of contact, the first point everybody looks to you know because they'll tell you the government are the ones that should be providing the security of lives and property the government should invest in the people and uh, you know particularly as the 2019 election is just around the corner you know last year we we're talking about looking at 2019 but now we are in 2019 now if you're looking at a government would you be looking at a government based on the manifesto a government that doesn't include the people in their manifesto talking about human capital, human capital. You know, if you look at the definition of capital, they will tell you a capital is an amount of money that is set aside to start a business. Capital is a certain amount of money that is set aside to start a business. Now, when you're talking about human capital, that is the most valuable asset, the most valuable asset. And according to research, you'll find out that a lot of people seem to agree with that fact that human investment is something that doesn't really exist much in developing nations, third world nations like, you know, countries like Nigeria. They'll tell you Nigeria is a developing nation. Yeah. But those are the things. If you look at what happens in developed nations where you see children in their curriculum in school, they're given task and assignments to innovate, to create, to make things that will add to the development of the economy. Now, do you think we have such thing existing in Nigeria? And if so, how supportive is the government, the current administration, the past administration, and the future administration, how supportive have they been in terms of encouraging human capital development, HCD? So those are the things that we're looking at. And we're expecting your calls. The numbers are displayed on the screen. And of course, you can also be part of this conversation by visiting our social media platforms, 
on Facebook, on Twitter, and also on Instagram, where you get to be a part of this conversation and continue with us. And of course, you have a chance to call us in the studio and get your part. Let's know what you think about human capital development. Blessed, let's consider job creation, first of all, because we can't talk about job creation, we can't talk about human capital development without looking at the role of government in creating jobs for the people. Now, talking about jobs creation, you will, you will agree with me that one of the uh, things that drive the economy is the uh, labor force. And then again, if the right people are not there, and the right people are supposed to be um, so supposed to be the right jobs are not there, they will, won't be expecting much in terms of economic growth and all that. Now, talking about jobs creation, we 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 we've seen clearly that um, for some time, from some time now, Nigeria has been grappling with the challenges of providing enough job for teaming youth and all that. Year in um, every year, we are having a large number of students coming out of school, and then they are going um, into the. Um, um, the labor market, but the question is, um, how prepared are, are they for the labor market? Now, it's it's uh, we we need to start moving towards a, uh, 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 a stage whereby we don't start uh, our youth don't start looking for jobs, or rather, thinking of how they can create more jobs, and in their own way, they're adding to the growth of, of the economy and also they're also developing the nation in their own little quarter and all that. So when you talk about um, job creation, it's a very key, key, key role that the government needs to look into critically and see how they can create more jobs to enable the economy to have a boost and, and, and all that. Okay, so enabling the economy, you know, humans are one of the major uh, sources. You know, if you look at labor, the provision of labor, it is very essential in every chain of production. You can't take away labor because they are the ones, the ones that actually uh, make sure that every other factor of production flows succinctly and it goes according to plan. So my question is, the question that we're asking this morning is, uh, before we get to the 2019 election as a person, what would you be looking out for? Would you, would you rather vote a government that actually has the best interest of the people, of humans as part of their major uh, point in their manifesto or would you really go for a, a, a government or a, a candidate that just you know looks at every other aspect neglecting all the uh, the most important ones which is the human capital development the most valuable asset in the in the world I'll put it that way now we'll look at the the, the budget pre uh, proposal of the uh, the current government we'll look at what they have actually outlined for the education sector, the health sector. Considering all those factors, do you think that they have done enough in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, encouraging the people, in terms of empowering the people? And I remember one of the experience that uh, a caller called in uh, during the show. He said, um, you know, he doesn't believe in the government again. That was one of the callers that called in on the show saying it doesn't really believe in this current government or the government in general saying he doesn't know why they can't invest on the people but rather they would embezzle the money and they would rather do some certain things for their family and forgetting the people in the community now that's what people are saying so what the, the, the question is what is your perception about the government what are you perceiving about the government? What do you think that the government is doing about this situation right now? And as a matter of fact, I remember that we told you we're going to be having a guest in the studio with us who's going to be talking about the human capital development, which is an essential aspect of every economy in Nigeria. So to, to further buttress on this topic of human capital development, a roadmap to the 2019 election, we have a guest in the studio and he is Barista uh, Tunde Kolawale, and it will be analyzing the uh, issue of human cap capital development. So, right about now, we'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll go into the details of the human capital development, the roadmap to 2019 elections. Stay with us. Super Screen Television is now on Star Times Channel 173. Now, our tentacles are extended to give you the very best of sports news, entertainment shows, current affairs, blockbuster movies, and lots more. Tune in to Star Times Channel 173 and enjoy the very best of super screen television. Now you're talking.
right, you're welcome back. Many thanks for staying with us. We have our guest in the studio, and he is a legal practitioner and a public affairs analyst. His name is Barry Star Tunde Kolawale, a familiar face in Superdon. You're welcome to Superdon, sir. Good morning, Anthony. Thanks for having me. Olamide, precisely. I'm Olamide. It's so good to have you on the show. Yeah, good morning to all the people listening to us this morning. Okay, we want to say Happy New Year, and uh, you know, it's good to see you, basically. Thank you, thank you. It's, uh, last year was a portfolio of uh, things. Let's hope that this year is going to be better for us, all of us as individuals mm. and as a nation. All right, as a nation. Now, as a nation, we're looking at human capital development. Now, do you think uh, we've done enough? But first of all, first of mm. all, let's yeah. get your perception. Mm. What is your perception about human capital development? Mm. Uh, honestly speaking, I would want to say that um, that is a topic that is very, very charming and very dear to my heart as an individual. Because when you take a costly look at history, yeah, around the world, different nations, different people and all that, you find out that human beings are the most essential. They are the most important in any developmental strategy. Things like mineral resources, things like uh, rivers, things like uh, uh, um, the kind of or nature of forest or land that you have, really don't matter. And I say this because uh, you look at a country mm -hmm. like Israel, for example, yeah, basically a very arid uh, country, basically that of deserts and what have you. But seeing what they have been able to do, they are able to do it because human beings have put their ingenuity into turning around a desert land into a, a, an agrarian, agrarian, a viable and any land that can be used to some productive uh, uh, use. Also look at a country like Japan. No mineral resources, nothing. But with the right mix of human development and mm -hmm. all that, see what Japan is as a nation. So that's the kind of thing that I think uh, uh, a right human development strategy can give to a nation without even having any mineral resources uh, to sustain uh, yourself. So my take on human, human capital development is basically that uh, we focus on human beings as the most crucial level of development. And uh, if you do the right things, you are likely to get the right results with human resources. Right. Okay, uh, as <coughs> Nigerian being one of Africa's biggest economies, mm. and as we've faced the problem of human capital development mm. over the years, in spite of all the abundant resources mm. that the nation is blessed with, mm. now why do you think we're still at this level in terms of human capital development? It is a combination of so many things. It's a combination of so many things. First and foremost, I would want to say this country has been unfortunate not to have visionary leadership. And leadership is very, very important. I do agree. Institutions are more important than just one single woman. Mm. But you see, when you have a leadership that has a vision, as you guys where they want to take their country into another, you are likely to reach your destinations faster than when you have leadership that are very, very barren in Nigeria. Take a look at Nigeria from independent, the quality of human resources that have governed now. You had the Tavaba Lewa, who had probably maybe a only standard six education and all that, and coming from the kind of environment in which he came from, he never had exposure to, 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 to Western um, ideas, to Western technology and all that. Most of his orientation was towards the East. Yes, he had standard six. They had Arabic and all this kind of Islamic uh, uh, sciences or knowledge uh, behind them and all that. He became uh, 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 the prime minister of this country where you have an Azikwe who has a master's degree from an American university who has traveled around the world who is more exposed and all that. You had an Aula and all that who was a lawyer and who is more versatile, who is well educated, who is written so many books, who is uh, and all the rest of them. And then you had that kind of a people leading the country and so and also came there was a coup uh Agui Rosi came into he is a soldier soldiers are not trained to manage society they are trained to execute or manage crisis and war and after go on i mean after um um uh, Erosi, you had a uh, go on and uh, you and i know that go on became made of say, at the age of maybe 27 or 27, uh, they are about another. He is also a soldier, he's not trained to manage society. They are trained to execute wars and all that. At the time, Gowon was head of state and all that. This country had all the money in the world to do whatever we had wanted to do. But rather than usefully spend that money and all that, we embarked on giving the money 
to people as doji and want to increase salaries of people and all that. The kind of thing that the president administration is doing, going to the market to give people 10,000 10, naira and all that, 100,000 naira, say, they say it's straight up money and all that and all that. So if Gowon had the vision as a leader, that was the time we would have uh, solved the problem of electricity, for example, by, expand, by, 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 by investing heavily on electricity because you could only make a projection. Here is a country maybe about when Gowon was in there, maybe about 150 million and thereabout. And then you had a lot of money in your hands in which everybody was buying electronics like television, uh, refrigerators and all that. So you could make a projection. The country is going to have about 180 million come 2018. And if you have that kind of thing, everybody is likely to be having complements of electric gadgets in their homes and all that. They will require this amount of, electric, uh, of, of energy and all that. And then you project, you invest in that kind of uh, energy and all that. By that time, we also have developed the railway system. We have the locomotive and as look, we want to turn this locomotive to the modern railway system, standard rail gate. We want to build bullet trains and all that. But go on, never had that vision. Okay. All he could say was that, look, Nigeria's problem is not uh, money but how to spend it. That is barrenness. That is lack of idea. A leadership at that vision wouldn't be talking that way because there are so you could in Lagos, for example, you could build a metro on the ground trains and what have you. And so all the gridlock, all the the problem of uh, the transportation that we have in this kind of uh, uh, Lagos, uh, they wouldn't have been there. So that is one thing. The other one is uh, the leader. I mean, our people. Our people have been too much. Uh, they have allowed the leaders to divide them too much. They have allowed the ethnicity to creep in their thinking, into action, into our perception, into the way and manner they look at things. They have forgotten that leadership, whether they be of the southwest, whether southeast or whether of the northeast, or whether of the north center and all that. When it comes to protecting their own personal interests and all that, they are always united. But the ordinary man on the streets in Nigeria today, when he's going to vote, when he's going to react to issues and all that, he is thinking about the, his uh, tribe, his ethnicity. Ah, he is our man. If he has embezzled this amount of money, let it be. After all, the other tribe have embezzled only their own time and what have you. Forgetting that the money that has been mismanaged and money that would have been used to build a 10 mainland bridge, that would have been used to build a standard railway gate, that would have been used to, to improve hospital, that would have been used to revive our comatose educational system. So the followership are also a, a problem. The, the other area is the intellectual community. Okay. Uh, in the past, we used to have, especially um, 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 in the, up to the early, late 80s, yeah. we had a very, very vibrant intellectual community in this country. All our universities, Amon Dubelo University, for example, University of Ife, uh, Unsuka, Benin, uh, Lagos, has always been uh, a bourgeois uh, university, reactionary, very backward, uh, in the way I manage the intellectual community in those okay. places. Thing. But this other university that I mentioned, Abu, uh, University of Ibadan, Ensuka, Beni, and other, there were universities in those places who have very radical ideas. They have radical ideology, which they were imparting on their students. And in, in a way, too, they had very decisive influence in the kind of idea that they put to society, such that the kind of thing that you see all over the campuses today, Yahoo, Yahoo, courtisms and all that. It was these radical university lecturers and all that that made sure that those kind of things do not germinate and where they do germinate, they don't grow in most of the universities. Immediately, um, uh, I've forgotten, is it, uh, there is, we the, had the minister who wrote um, uh, a paper to the military administration in those days that they should approve, they should sack all those radical lecturers in all those universities and all that. When I remember his name, during this program, I'll, right. I'll let you know. Okay. And all that. So, they removed all those university lecturers like Badi Onimade, Oni, Edwin Madunagu, and what have you. They sacked all of them. Immediately, they sacked all of them and all that. All these bourgeois ideas, all this backward thinking, all this courtism and all this yawi yawi thing just creep into our universities and all that. And all the radical ideology that these people used to espouse, not just on the campus, not on, just on the way they teach, the students and other, but even in contribution to newspaper debates, to television debates, to radio, to radio debates and other, all those things vanished. And then the courses took over all over our, our, our universities and educational system. So education is a bedrock of development. Mm. Any society that is going to move forward, that is going to develop another, there must be massive, massive investment in education. 
It is not democracy that develops any nation. Okay, let, let's you know? let's let's look at the the uh, issue. One of the things I pointed out, well, yeah. I can point out from what you all said, right, is right. it's uh, this the issue of failed uh, or mm. should I say failed human capital exactly. development has to be can be traced back mm. to the origin of mm. this country. Exactly. Exactly where mm. did we miss this? Mm. Exactly where mm. did we miss this? Mm. And if we point out that thing how can we correct this situation mm -hmm. currently right now mm -hmm. well i um, i would say we missed it um uh, in 1960 okay uh, when nigeria got uh, independence uh, when nigeria got independence what we did was just to hold line and sinker adopt the so-called british system and the way and manner in which they do their things. And then we brought all those things and then just planted them in there. And then we started uh, 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 along that developmental uh, 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 roadmap. Whereas you and I do know that what the British brought in here was not to favor us, it was to develop us. Basically, they came initially to, to enslave us. When slavery ended, they colonized us because they needed our raw materials. And when the agitation for independence um, uh, got to, 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 to a level they couldn't manage, they gave us a kind of phantom independence and then they left. And then began their new colonial strategy. If we were a right thinking nation or another, we would have evolved a political system that has both the modern and basic manners in which other progressive society manage their society, and then inculcate in it part of our own cultural views in there. You go to a country like India, for example, and all that. Yes, they were colonized by the British too. They had everything that is Britain and all that. But what you find in India is a kind of mix of their own cultural values with what they have, they, with the good ones they have been able to borrow from Britain and from some other parts of the world. And then they use that to develop their political system. If Nigeria had evolved that kind of a culture, rather than just adopting the British system, all line and sinker and all that, it probably would have been better. Now. And it is not far fetched. The colonial master, when they were here, they were the ones that introduced all these uh, GRAs and all that because they saw the African people. The indirect rule in system. Yeah, they don't want to mix okay. the, with the 13 Africans and all that. They had their own colonial system. I mean, uh, GRAs and what have you. Our people, immediately we got independent, our leadership also started building GRAs and all that. They don't want to live among their own people. But Zeke was different, Awolo was different. If you knew where Awolo had his house in the battle, He's on the major road, they're very close to a secondary school. And what have you? He was living with the people, even though there was a bodhija uh, in the pattern, which had uh, uh, the government quarters, the GRAs, and all that. He said, No, that is not what I want to live within the people so that I know what is happening to them, interact with them. And all. But most of these other leaders from this other place, and all that, they were living in Koi GRA, in VA, and what have you. They were totally insulated from the people they were governing. Secondly, when the colonial masters were there, Look at the way they behave. They had um, a long convoy of cars, uh, security people to protect them from the native, from the local people, and what have you, and all that. Our local leaders also bought into that. In the they took over power. You will see people like the finance minister, Koti Ebo, he will wear a long rope like this. <laughs> Somebody will be behind him holding the long rope and all that. And then some people will be following him like slaves, holding his hand and holding his sticks and all that. Those were not the kind of thing we expect visionary leaders in the necessity to adopt as a political method of managing their own people. So that's where we mix yeah, it. That was where we mix it. Okay. They, 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 they refuse uh, to adopt the right mix of political ideology and philosophy mm. to manage society. That was where we, we, everything went wrong. All right, so let's look at the youths mm. of nowadays. Mm. The youths of nowadays. I mean, do you believe, do you think the youths believe in working or do you think they are looking for mm. an easy way out? Now, looking at mm. the vices in the mm. society where you have youth engaging mm. in mm. internet fraud, exactly. uh, engaging in armed robbery mm. and mm. things that are not mm. uplifting of the people. Do mm. you think do you mm. think they believe in work? Mm. Mm. Anthony, I mean, um, sorry. Uh, that's a very beautiful question to have asked. In fairness to you, mm. let me say, I have met some very, very brilliant youth, some very, very intelligent youth, from very, very hardworking youth, and all that. Incidentally, I'm sorry to use this example, I manage uh, houses, and I've uh, 
in some of the houses that I manage, I have met some people who graduated from the university, very young girls and boys and all that, who in spite of all the distractions on our campuses, have come out with uh, first class degrees, have come out with two one degrees and all that. And children, boys and girls who had very clear vision as regards what they want for themselves and what they want for this society. They are hard working. They don't want to be spoon fed on anything, on any idea. They know where they want to go. They want to be invest to be entrepreneurs. They want to be investors. They want to be university professors and all that. And they are working diligently, I mean, diligently to attain these uh, 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 goals for themselves. On the other hand, you have a large majority of our youth who are merely looking at what they see around them. They see the leadership these very ostentatious lives who don't deserve the kind of uh, life they are living. They see politicians riding very uh, many cars, living in big, big houses, any jumbo salaries and what have you. They see their own parents cutting corners in their respective places of work and bringing the proceeds of this cheating, of this stealing to mm. their homes and using it to give a lavish lifestyle to their own children. So majority of our children have tend to copy the bad sides of the society they have seen, the ostentatious lives that the leadership that their parents are living. They have seen people get rich quick and they ask themselves, if this man can cut corner to get rich quick, why not myself? And so, rather than embark the virtue, the culture of hard work, the most of hard work and other majority of them are shifted towards the yahoo yahoo thing that you have mentioned, mm. courtesans uh, and all that, and then uh, prostitution, and then pimping, and then um, irregular migrations to some of these uh, other countries and other. Whatever way you look at it, a society will get the kind of environment, the kind of people that it consciously or unconsciously work towards. These children that we see as lazy people yeah. who don't have a culture of uh, hard work, who are into yahuya, who are into drug addictions and what have you, we produce them. We produce them. If the leadership, if the parents are not living a sensational life, if parents will not go and buy, uh, go and bribe people to sit for work, to sit for jam for their children and all that. If at home, parents remind their children on the need to imbibe the culture of hard work, on the need to be self-independent, on the need to value uh, uh, um, uh, selflessness, brotherhood, and, all, and what have you. I am sure the kind of children that we see who constitute the majority in the society today, they wouldn't be there. Okay. They won't be there. So they, 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 we need to reorientate these children, and the orientation will first come from the home, because home is the first uh, bedrock of education. Whatever education you get, education must first start from home before you start nursing school, before primary, before secondary schools and all that. All right. It's a reflection. What we are getting in the larger side is a reflection of the education that parents give to their children in their respective homes. All right, we're still talking <laughs> human capital development, the roadmap 2019, and with us is Barrister um, Tunde Kola, a legal practitioner, public affairs analyst, and the phone lines are open for you to call in and give your own contribution. Do you think as a nation we're there yet, and what do you think government needs to do? And while we're still discussing about this, we're also looking for ways where you can also call in and provide possible solutions to helping us um, come out of this uh, quagmire that we'll find ourselves as a nation. Now, Barrister, let me quickly yeah. ask you this mm. now. Well, we've talked about um, the, 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 role of the, the role of the youth as mm. regards human capital development mm. and uh, um, the, the assets of every nation, mm. even an organization, exactly. is the people. Exactly. Now, looking, looking forward now, how do you think we can impact our mm. youth positively mm. to ensure that they become more productive mm. and they become a great asset to, to the mm. nation uh, and in, now and in the future as mm. well? First and foremost, I will want to appeal to parents that they have a role, a very, very big role, in molding the lives of their children. If you want your child to be a pilot, it is right in there in your house that you can shape the destiny of that child. If you want him to be a teacher, university professor, it is right in there and all that. I'll give you an example. I started life as a journalist and how did I begin? My uncle that I lived with, in those days will buy newspaper, he will buy three, he will buy the Daily Times, he will buy uh, era that is produced in my state, Quara, and then I think one other newspaper that I cannot uh, 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 remember now. And uh, even sometime before he read the newspaper, 
he will throw it onto the dining table and ask all of us to go and uh, read the paper. And um, after reading, or sometime later at night, when he has also read another, he will come back and ask us questions. What did you read? Did you learn anything in the paper? What is this? And then we will hold discussions and all that. That was how I developed interest, for example, in reading newspaper, which eventually took me into journalism at the beginning of my, of my career as, a, as, as, as an adult. So if at home too, and then also in those days, if you went to school and all that, my uncle will not tell you. Sometimes at night he will go and into our rooms, look at our bags and all that. The books we brought back home, the pencils okay, and the virus. Then we have yeah. Israel mm. from Bagada. Israel, good morning. Mm. Good morning. Mm. Yeah, happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Uh, I need to especially the get to the house. All right. Yes. Uh, we will actually tell it all. The reality is this is a nation whereby we are yet to understand who we are as a country. Um, until we define our state as a nation, and this is here towards having a desired goal to making the nation a, 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 an, 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 an envious one. You know, I mean, an enviable one. We are not going to get to anywhere. The people like you, sir, that are nemes, you are doing a very fantastic work. We need a lot of you that can enlighten most youth in this country. Generations ahead, they have bastardized this country until people are well enlightened to know that there are some civic human rights that they are entitled to, which is education. One of them is education. We are not going to get to anywhere. Thank you, and uh, God bless you. All right, thank you very much, Israel, for calling. Okay, yeah. you, you were saying So something. I was saying, so my uncle would look at that. Uh, if there were things he never bought for you and you find your bag, your school bag and all that, on your room, he will ask you questions about it. And if you are unable to give a satisfaction, he will reach out to your teacher or reach out to the person whom you said give them to you and all that. If it is stolen, you, you know the man, you are in serious trouble. So that kind of a thing gave us a background in which we were not going to take anything that didn't belong to us. A culture of reading, we already had it when we were very young and all that. Those are the kind of things I want to see our parents now inculcate in their children. Not uh, buying, uh, asking people to sit for the yeah. exam for your... Okay, okay we, we have, have Ayo from Maryland. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Good morning and good morning to your guests. Yeah, good, good morning, morning sir. Please, uh, in support of what uh, Israel was trying to say, they almost speak my mind concerning the youth and the human development in Nigeria. All right. You see, when you talk of the youth, you have to look into the percentage of the youth and the category of youth too. Because whenever we talk about youth, we got we prepare our mind to graduate, graduate, graduate. But there are youth that are that graduate. There are youth that that drop out from secondary school. There are youth that are finished from primary school. There are youth that don't go to school like, at all at all. Which one is dangerous in a society? Which one are we concentrating upon? Mm. Then, when you talk of uh, development, a youth from a university now coming in what to be a he, he went and went to a shop. And I'm not I'm his capital. He doesn't want to be put on anybody, he's put on himself. He went to a shop, and this shop is, as far as he went to a shop, quite crazy. So, come out which has been arrived with a boy for registration and a lot of money. You don't even know what is going to be his uh, interest, what is going to be profit. Before you know where is step up. Before you know the total of the Before you know it's going to buy the material in the, for the market. There will be police on the road. You can get him or a recipe for one law or the other. We should also look into the law that is cutting our nation. Mm, all right. Thank you. Thank you very mm. much. Ayo uh, raised a valuable point there. Mm. And uh, let's look at youth mm. in all encompassing right mm. now. We're looking at not just graduates this mm -hmm, time around, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm, people, youths mm -hmm, in the street. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. 
do you think that the government is reaching out enough to them? No, the, no, okay, let's even forget about the mm. graduates now coming mm. from the tertiary institutions. Mm. Do you think the government policies, uh, the government of the past and the present, present, do you think they have actually considered those ones who are out of school, who didn't go to school, who perhaps stopped somewhere in the school or didn't even get educated at mm. all? Do you think mm. the government empowerment has gotten as far as them? No, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Let me give you one example. Where each time I'm going to court, uh, verify, especially Sango and all that, and I don't want to go in my car, I want to take public Before you continue, we okay, have um, right. Pascal from Onipan. Pascal, right. good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. So, my opinion and contribution to what you're saying this morning. So, before I start, I want to appreciate your hard work. You guys are doing marvelous work here this morning. Thank you. So, with regards to what we are saying, let's get ourselves the way to our government are not ready to help us. They are not ready to help the youth. Okay, for what the last caller said, the youth from the the graduate youth mm. and the ones that are not graduate. Mm. Do you know that it is possible that someone who did not just need to primary school can fit a graduate of BSc in this country today? Sure. Okay. Because of what? You will finish school, no job. Okay, look at now. For the past two months now, track. Does it mean that the government mm. doesn't have the money or the, the cannot do this with the asshole? So how does it happen to you? Okay, let's try to the, 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 the village or to the street to hustle. They will catch you. Either they call you a young boy <laughs> or they call you a criminal or they call you a this. In fact, you are tired. We the youth are fed up of this country. They are not helping us. So please let me let, let me let them understand what is what, what is human capital. Mm. They don't understand what is human capital. They only believe that all the youth need collar job. Somebody like me, I don't need white white job. Mm. I need something that I can do to fetch me money every day. Okay. I don't like staying in the office. Every day mm. I stay in the office, you give me money, this and that. I have what I can do on my own. There's no way to help. The little one you can do, either the tax force or the police, or they destroy your shop, or they destroy where you work. They say either you register for this or do this. So where are we going to? How can we cope? Mm. We are fed up. Let them help. Thank you, so, thank you very much. This is what I have to thank say. You thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you for your contribution. Okay, um, mm -hmm. in addition, yes, uh, in addition to mm -hmm. what he said, do you think just uh, mm -hmm. like a big part of the question? Yeah. Do you think we have an enabling environment for human capital development? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I was trying to give a case study, mm. and before he called, um, I say time I'm going to court. Uh, some we maybe some go or if for and what have you, and I don't go in my car. I pass through should. You? And I have to go very early to be able to reach those places because they cost it at nine. Okay. Another, if you see the number of young people, both boys and girls, who are sleeping under the bridge in no shoddy, and even making babies there, I will see them having small, small babies under those bridges. And other, you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed. And I ask myself, doesn't the people in authority know that this thing is happening in this, uh, I mean, uh, in this environment? I'm not saying that um, um, other parts of the world like America or Britain and all that, that you won't find some homeless people mm. who are sleeping under the bridge and what have you. But our own is peculiar. Peculiar in the sense that the number of people that you find living under those bridges and all that, and the background in which those children are coming from, they thought not to arise. In fact, that is the where most of the criminals have been bred. Because a child living under the bridge who has no future and what have you and all that, ordinarily is likely to graduate into criminality. Okay. And then begin to terrorize the society. of society. If we have a government policy that takes care of everybody and all that, you will not allow those children to continue to live that kind of a life. We will get them inside in there, educate them or give them vocational education so that they'll be able to, 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 to live a decent life without depending on anybody. All right, without no. depending. Okay. Yeah. With regards to, to, to really uh, reorientating our youth, I think we must focus on our education, uh, not just the primary, 
the tertiary, but also all vocational forms of education, vocational mm -hmm. education. I, for example, the kind of so-called trader money they are talking about today, I would have preferred to use it to build vocational schools or vocational institutions. In maybe in all the world or the local governments that we do have in this country, in which youth, like uh, the last caller, who don't want, for White example, to job. go to university, can go in there, learn about okay. entrepreneurship. Before you continue, Barry, then, we have yeah. an, a long year from Pablo Grifo. Okay, there's a disconnect yeah. there. You can continue. Okay. Who in, can go into any of these vocational schools, learn about entrepreneurship and all that, and then he go into whatever he wants to do mm. as a people. Our university, too, because universities are very, very crucial. To, 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 to human capital uh, development. The kind of orientation, the kind of education that we have in there today is not the right mix of education that can move this society forward and that can equip and empower the youth for the challenges of the future. Now, no, I'm not too sure we are teaching anything like artificial intelligence in our <laughs> universities. What? I am not sure we are teaching robotics <coughs> in any of our universities. Our electrical electronic uh, departments are not at the level in which they should be. The computer science are not at the level in which they should be. Geography, astronomy, and what have you. They are not at the level in which you will be. <coughs> Very shortly, the Chinese people have announced that they are no longer going to use street lights and all that. They have manufactured artificial moons, which they will suspend over all their cities. And it is that artificial, those artificial moons that will not be used to light, in, to light their cities at night. They say the heat that electricity is generating that the heat that electricity is generating is heating up their society, so they will have artificial moves in most of their society, I mean, mm. in most of their, of, their, of their cities, and uh, what have you. Okay. The implication of that is that, uh, the implication of that is that uh, some of this oil that we are selling to power the, to China, that they use to power their energy, they will no longer need those things. So, very shortly, I can almost predict in the next 20 years, Petroleum that we depend on today, mm. as our mainstay, will become like coal, which nobody wants, because it's going to be polluting the environment. Exactly. Okay. So okay. we must, the, we must uh, kind of turn our educational system around, especially in the university, in such a way that science will be about seventy yeah. percent, vocational education will be there. Whether you are in science or in art, anytime you have long vacation, you must be attached to industry. To innovate. To, 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 to go to some industry to work and see how things are done in those places. That is the way it is done in a place, for example, like Germany. Mm. No matter what background you are coming from, you must have entrepreneurial education. And then you are attached to the factories every time you have, you have a long vacation. So that you learn the nitty gritty of how things are done and then cultivate the culture of hard work. Of, and then to be able to be, you become, when you are attached to industry, you are paid some stipend. You earn some money. You are already learning to be independent of not just the state, but also your parents. Those are the kind of things we want to see. All right. Some of these educational institutions. Of course, the educational institution. Oh. Those are the things we want to see. Uh, a, a government that encourages our creativity, a government that encourages production, that encourages innovation. You know, I remember when we started the show, we said something about innovation. Encouraging innovation. Mm. Breakthrough. It is very important as one of the ways of driving the Nigeria economy. But let's talk about, uh, well, let's leave the government right now mm. because we know they have a huge role to play in terms of human capital development. But the people themselves. Now we have entrepreneurs. Do they believe in, in investing in humans? And also you have the youth themselves. You have people who have a mentality of leaving Nigeria for a better and a greener pasture, then how then can we mm. make this country better mm. when you have people seeking to leave mm. the country mm. rather than looking for ways mm. of making this country better? Mm. How can we mm. then stop all those things mm. and develop the country? Mm. Uh, thank you, thank you. I will take you back to history again. Um, when people like us were in secondary school, in all the major cities in Nigeria, we have what we call the labor office. In all the major cities, in Ibadan, in, uh, in Lagos, in Oshogbo, in some of these cities, there are even more than four, three labor offices. Mm. When you leave secondary school, before you had university admission, before you had polytechnic admission, before you go into HSC and all that, and you want to work maybe for one or two years and all that, what you require to do is to go to any of these labor office, you will register your name, tell them the kind of grade you made in your WAEC or in your GCA and all that, and then they will note it down. Entrepreneurs, people who run factories, 
including government, when they need to employ people, where they go to is those labor offices in those cities. And as a local, we want this quality of a person to employ that as a clerk, either as a factory and all that. And then those people will bring out their books and all that. Anybody who fits into that, they will just call you or write a letter to you say, look, go to this social factory for an interview and all that. And then you will go in there. If the people find you suitable, without you knowing anybody, they will employ you. But somehow, how many labor offices can you find around Nigeria again? In our very eyes, uh, before people like us left the university, all the labor offices fizzled out. They came up with these uh, 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 other programs uh, uh, which were neither here nor there. It was just meant for investment of public uh, 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 funds. So, the entrepreneurs peered into that uh, program. They go in there to recruit their manpower. But today, how many of these entrepreneurs do we even have? The so-called entrepreneurs, those, most of the people are calling themselves entrepreneurs today in Nigeria today. When you really apply the, the parameters of defining who an entrepreneur is, can they meet the rigorous parameters of or the qualification of being called an entrepreneur? Most of them depend on government contracts and they say they are entrepreneur. For me, an entrepreneur is somebody who has either created an idea or invented some things, he has seen some loophole, or he has seen some uh, gaps in the society, he has seen some shortage, he has seen some needs, he has seen some requirements, and he's able to invent whether ideas or technology to meet those challenges, those needs, those things that the society requires. I give you an example. Most uh, people run laundry services, dry cleaning services and all that. They have problems. Uh, doing cleaning. When you look at your, your shirts, when you wear your shirts, you find out that uh, the stains and then the sweats and all that, uh, darkens the, 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 color, the color of your shirts and all that. And I noticed that most of the dry cleaners and all that, washing of those things is a difficult thing for them. Most time when they try to wash too hard, the thing gets, well, the, the, the color of the shirt gets worn out and then it gets stones and all that. If, for example, somebody wakes up and says, look, you invent some chemical in which when um, uh, you sell to dry cleaners, as soon as they get any of these clothes and all that, they just put say, that chemical, that strips uh, 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 on those uh, colors and all that. And without removing the, the color or damaging the color, the fabric, the, 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 the fabrics and all that, it removes the stains. You know, that is going to be a heat mm. which everybody is likely to be using. Just like somebody invented a, a, a cloth washing machine. But the cloth washing machine doesn't take out all the stains. Like if you work in the factory, they will tell you there are lubricants you use to wash the factory floor because uh, oil, some other things will fall on this. Somebody invented those chemicals. So those are the kind of people I call entrepreneurs. But the, most of the people you call entrepreneurs in our society today, they don't meet that parameter. Most of them solely rely on government contracts uh, as for the entrepreneurship. They are also traders. Somebody goes to Dubai and dis buy things from Dubai and distribute it in Nigeria, say it's an entrepreneur. But let's even leave, there are still a few ones like uh, who manufactures cars, uh, who manufactures certain things and uh, whatever. If you look at the challenges most of them are facing in terms of energy, electricity, in terms of harassment from the Lagos state and the federal government for taxes, in terms of the quality of manpower that is not there to run their factories and all that, you will be amazed. Such that most of the money goes into buying diesels to power their factories. That they have little or nothing left. They are unable to pay salaries. Are these the people that will now be investing in vocational centers for our children to be able to learn? It used not to be like that in the past. Mm. There were people who established furniture factories in those days when we were young in secondary school. They have very huge furniture factories. And when you left secondary school or during holidays, you go to those furniture factories to work. You not only earn money, you learn how to make furniture. At the same time. At the same time. Okay. All those things are visited out.
Most of the furniture that we use in this country today, they are imported. And if they are not imported, by the time the man manufacturing the furniture takes the cost of diesel, the cost of renting uh, his office uh, space, the harassment from the Federal Inland Revenue and the Lagos State Tax Offices and all that, and the extortion that come from all those places, they have little or nothing left to invest in developing the vocational skills of our youths. Right. So it's a, it's a balancing act. The government must uh, help the entrepreneurs in this society to be able to have a little left, to be able to do some reinvestment in developing our youth towards entrepreneurship. All right, to developing the youth yeah. towards entrepreneurship, that is the thing that we're looking at empowering the youth. And uh, we'll, we'll take a break at this time. When we come back, we'll look at the 2019 election and what the people should be looking out for in terms of their choice of candidates. Would you rather vote someone who doesn't have the interests of the people at heart, or would you vote someone who considered the people and made them the priority in his manifesto? After this break, we're still speaking with Barrister Tunde Kolawele. Stay with us. Super Don continues after the break. Super